Here's a, a little more complicated example. We've actually got two polar curves and we want to find um, the area that's kind of between the two. So first thing that we need to do is to figure out what curves we're talking about. Now we, the first curve, it says it's a circle and let's just figure out where that circle is. Remember, um, we could convert this to Cartesian if we multiplied both sides by r. Doing that makes this r squared, which is x squared plus y squared, and then r cosine theta is x. So we have x squared minus 3ax plus y squared equals 0. So the key to figuring out where the center of the circle is is to, is to uh, complete the square. So we have 3a over 2, which we square, which makes 9a over 4. 9a squared over 4, sorry. And we add that over here as well, 9a squared over 4. And um, then this becomes the perfect square, x minus 3a over 2. Oops, x minus 3a over 2 squared plus y squared equals 9a squared over 4. So we have a circle of radius 3a over 2 centered at 3a over 2, 0. So basically our center is here at 3a over 2. And the radius is also 3a over 2, so the circle just barely reaches back here this way. Okay, so there's the first curve. We need the area inside that circle that's also outside of this cardioid. Let's figure out what the graph of the cardioid looks like. So we make a little drawing in theta r space here. Um, the period of cosine is um, 2 pi, so we can quickly put down sort of the easiest points on cosine to find. And the amplitude of this thing, well, let's see, Cosine is going to be, it's always going to be between 0 and, uh, and uh, you take cosine and add 1 to it. Cosine is normally between negative 1 and 1, so if you add 1 to it, it's normally between 1 and, now it's going to be between 0, and, normally between negative 1 and 1, you add 1, it's between 0 and 2 times a, so the amplitude is going to be 2a, and it's going to oscillate around that center point a, so we have at 0, Cosine of 0 is 1, so we get a times 1 plus 1 is 2a. And we come down here, just the usual cosine pattern. Just like that. So there's r as a function of theta. Um, let's see what picture this draws. When we're facing um, an angle of 0, we actually can walk out a distance to A. So we can walk out a distance to A here. Now as we turn, by the time we turn to pi halves, we can only walk a distance of 2A. By the time we have pi, we're facing the direction west, right? But our radius is zero, so you can't walk out at all. So there's the, the upper lobe of our car cardioid. We turn back to three three pi halves, and we can we can move out a distance a, and then beyond that. Okay, so this I think is a little bit more like this when we look at that cardioid. So we put them both together. Let's see. There's three a over two. So the diameter is three a. Huh? So our cardioid comes back here and comes around and comes around. Okay, so they're saying find the area inside the circle that's outside the cardioid. They want this kind of moon-shaped region. What we can do in order to find that is to find the area inside the circle. In fact, we don't even have to do an integral to find the area inside a circle because we know the formula for the area inside a circle is pi r squared. But then we need to um, remove the area that is inside here. Ooh, that's a little tricky. There's a fan-shaped region that we could calculate. So if we could just find this angle, alpha and beta, so that we know where they intersect, maybe what we should do, instead of doing the area of the circle, we'll find the area of this, 
uh, kind of ice cream cone shaped area on the outside and we'll subtract the area of this fan shaped region on the inside but the key now is to find the angles alpha and beta so that we can do that so we're wondering at what angle on these two curves do you have the same value for r so in other words when is 3a cosine theta that's the value of r on the circle equal to a times 1 plus cosine theta. So if we distribute, we have 3a cosine theta equals a plus a cosine theta. We can take a cosine theta away from both sides and we'll just have on the left 2a cosine theta and on the right we'll have a. So cosine theta equals a over 2a. So cosine theta equals 1 half. Hmm. Now, there are two values that we could use um, for, the, for this angle. Um, one of them is negative, one's positive. We could say, cos let's see, what angle has a cosine of 1 half? Um, well, that would be the angle um, minus pi thirds right? or plus pi thirds. Okay, so we could see this on our on our picture then. This is the graph that we did for the cardioid. This would come back. And so and between minus pi thirds and over here at pi thirds then that would be the part of the cardioid where where we're turning from here to here, right? Okay, and same thing on our circle equation, or similar thing anyway. Our circle between minus pi thirds and pi thirds, we have this positive radius, right? So in that region, then we're if we if we graph this curve, then we have the the outer part. So basically, we have two fan-shaped regions, and we can subtract them. We need to do the integral from alpha to beta, which we just decided was minus pi thirds to pi thirds of one-half r squared d theta for the outside curve, which is the circle. So one-half um, r squared would be 9a squared cosine squared theta d theta um, minus the part that is inside the cardioid. So the part of that fan-shaped region that's inside the cardioid, we could calculate, let's see, this time when you calculate r squared you get a squared times 1 plus cosine theta squared d theta. So that's the integral that we're going to need to do. Let's, um, let's simplify that. We could combine it into a single integral. And let's see what it is when it all, all comes down. So we have, um, let me recopy that. We've got the integral from minus pi thirds to pi thirds of 1 half 9a squared cosine squared theta d theta minus 1 half a squared times um, this squared. Let's see, if you take 1 plus cosine theta times itself, you're going to get 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. All of that d theta. All right, let's collect like terms and see what we have. Integral from minus pi thirds to pi thirds. Um, we have 9 halves a squared cosine squared theta. Um, oh, let's say I didn't need this d, th d theta. It's all out here. OK. Um, then we have minus 1 half a squared. And 1 half of 2 cosine theta would be uh, uh, cosine theta, so we have minus a squared cosine theta, and then we have minus one half a squared cosine squared theta. All of this d theta. We can do a little bit of combining. Here's minus pi thirds to pi thirds. Uh, nine halves you take away one half leaves eight halves, and eight halves is four. So we have um, four a squared cosine squared theta, we need to do that integral. And then we have um, minus 1 half a squared and minus a squared cosine theta, all d theta. Now this integral is easy because the antiderivative of cosine is sine 
and this integral is easy because it's a constant as far as theta is concerned. This integral we just need to use an identity on. Remember our identity is the power reducing identity. Um, so we have 4a squared cosine squared theta is 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta all over 2. Let's see, and this 2 goes into that 4 twice. Minus 1 half a squared minus a squared cosine theta all d theta. All right, now we can, um, let's see, now we can write the, the antiderivative since, um, let's see, we have, yeah, we're good. So we've got here, when we multiply this 2a squared through, we've got 2a squared times 1, so the antiderivative of that would be uh, 4a squared theta. And then we have 2a squared times cosine 2 theta, so the antiderivative of that would be sine 2 theta. Let's see, when we take the derivative of sine, you get cosine 2 theta times the derivative of what's inside would give you um, a 2. So we just need a squared sine 2 theta, and the derivative of that will be equal to 2a squared cosine 2 theta. Okay, and now the antiderivative of this is minus 1 half a squared theta, and the antiderivative of this is minus a squared sine theta, and we just evaluate it between our two um, endpoints there. Okay, so um, finally we can just evaluate here. So 4a squared theta pi thirds minus minus pi thirds would be 2 pi thirds. So we end up with 8 a squared pi thirds. And this we have a squared the sine of uh, 2 pi thirds is um, let's see the sine of 2 pi thirds is um, going to be root 3 over 2 right so we'll get root 3 over 2 when we plug in positive pi thirds minus um, if we plug in negative pi thirds we get negative root 3 over 2 and here we have minus 1 half a squared pi thirds minus minus pi thirds is 2 pi thirds and minus a squared times um, let's see the sine of pi thirds is root 3 over 2 minus the sine of minus pi thirds is minus root 3 over 2 so we've got all that all we have to do is collect all this up and whew, we'll be done um, so what do we have? We have 8a squared pi thirds, and this is root 3, so we have root 3 times a squared, when we take care of those two terms, and then this, this 2 cancels that 2, so we have minus um, a squared times pi thirds, and then root 3 over 2 minus minus root 3 over 2 is just root 3 over 2, so minus minus root 3 a squared. Okay, so this cancels that, and we have 8 pi thirds a squared minus a pi third leaves 7 pi thirds a squared as our final answer.